Hi, this is Entertainment Now on Now Breakfast, a production of Radio Now 95.3 FM Lagos. My name's Nabila Usman, and today my guest is Steve Gukas. For those of you who are Nollywood buffs, you know him and he hardly needs any introduction. Director, producer of countless movies, really, and it promises to be an exciting conversation. Um, so just starting off... Uh, when you look at Nollywood now, what do you see? What comes to mind? Hmm. When I look at Nollywood now, I see an industry that's on the cusp of growth, um, change, um, filled with opportunities that before now were few and far between. I say so because... Um, you're in a time when we're moving from just having films, you know, go on cinema. Actually, we've come from films just going direct to DVD, now to cinema, and then now you're going to do, you're able to do cinemas and you're able to do streamers. And the streamers are coming with budgets that are allowing people to envisage, dream up big projects that otherwise would have been impossible to consider because the consideration prior to now is, okay, how am I going to make the money back? And what do I tell, you know, investors, you know, to make them give me that money? Because half the time, um, recoupment is on a prayer and a wish. And so you try and keep the budget in such a way that, you know, you can get it back somehow. And if you didn't, the people won't be losing so much. Um, but now we are, we are we're in climes where projects are being done for a million dollars, $1.5 million, $2 million. Those are dreams that three, four years ago, you wouldn't be having, you know, as Nollywood. Um, so that's why I say we're on the cusp of change and, and growth. Um, and and we, we started off with one streamer, and now we have two, and the competition is intense. And a third streamer that was sort of a sleeping streamer is waking up because it realizes that it can't continue to pay the prices that it pays or do the kind of content that it does if it's competing with the other two who are, you know, so you're having Amazon, you're having Netflix, and now you're having Showmax, you know, waking up to realizing that. Those are sort of the three that are visibly on the scene, but there are others that are also coming in. What that means is that the, 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 the desire for, for content is just going to keep growing, and as it grows, opportunities to produce more content will just be, you know, incrementally as well. What's even more great is the fact that Africa is having a moment, right? And we need to turn that to a thing. And it's already a thing in music. It's becoming a thing in fashion and even, even food. Film needs to also follow that. And so that means that audience possibilities is, is growing and expanding. And as that expands, the reach of the films would also go that far. So I think Nollywood is in a very exciting place at the moment. How we go forward with it is, is what is in question because mm. um, technology democratizes production. Right. Which means that, you know, with a phone now, you can make a film that people can still go to cinema and watch. Um, so technology wise, in terms of, you know, the look and feel of the movies, things are changing, but we're going the other direction in terms of storytelling. So that's where growth is required now. So before we get to storytelling, um, certainly comes to my attention. It catches my attention when you speak about technology and democratizing the process, right? I'm curious about its impact on the audience, the population, and here's why. Like you said, you know, you're doing shoot to streamers as opposed to once upon a time where it was to DVDs and then cinemas. And Nigeria has not had what, for instance, the US had, the golden age of cinema, right? Mm. And we can tie that very much to the economy, the spending power of the people. And we're still very much in, in that place right about now, even though Nollywood is coming into the heyday as far as you and I can dream anyway. Um, I, I wonder if that is, for instance, a source of concern for someone such as yourself who's behind the camera and who's doing much of the funding, for instance, of some of these projects. Is that something you think about? Um, so two things. I, I, would, I, would, I would wager that Nollywood 
he's actually had his golden era. That in the age where we were having no no internet, no social media, and films from Nigeria have traveled across all of Africa, traveled all the way to Brazil, all the way to America. And we were telling stories that people could connect with, right? Um, be it... So, in terms of just content, appreciation, and people feeding off of it, I'd say that moment came. Now, what's happening now is that we are now crossing over to a more... Um, more um, global definition of what cinema is so that in terms of how the stories are structured how how the films are shot how they are finished um, that's where things are, are, are new but I'd say that at the time when we were holding continents spellbound with storytelling that, that came, that happened, right? We can only build on that. Um, Hollywood is not resting on its oars based on the golden era. It keeps reinventing eras and eras and eras. And I think that we are at different phases in terms of how Nollywood has grown and would also continue to, 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 to grow in that sort of direction as well. I mean, I'll definitely take that because um, I think about across the board different aspects of the Nigerian life. We've been talking about, you know, defining these things in our own terms and according to our own growth. Um, and this brings me to the conversation around storytelling. So one of the things that's definite about Nollywood over the last five we can be, I can give some room and say 10 years, is that we've seen improvement, right, mm. in the technique the storytelling, on the other hand, does not have as much praise to it. We are improving, but there's still a lot that is lacking. Um, and I don't know if this is something that comes with the writing itself or just the ability to execute that storytelling on camera. What are your thoughts? I think it is more, more that we have a generation of filmmakers that are struggling with identity. The filmmakers in early Nollywood were very clear who they were. They were very clear the stories they wanted to tell, and they told those stories. We have a generation of filmmakers that don't know whether to be fully African or fully Western, uh, and they're creating a hybrid where, um, which is why I say to you perhaps the golden era came and we didn't recognize it, is the fact that um, your contribution to the culture table has to be the most authentic you. If I'm making a film that could have been made in New York, there's no point me making it. Um, um, what's his name now? This I forget his name, but he was making a film in Vietnam. And, and someone would say to him, but well, you're telling this story from the American perspective. Um, but if the Vietnamese did this or did that or did that, how would you reflect it? And he said, well, look, I can only tell it from the perspective that I understand, that I know. That other perspective is for a Vietnamese filmmaker to tell. So if you're going to tell a Nigerian story, you have to be as authentic to Nigeria as you can be, right? Um, so having said that, we have a mixture. And you would see that the films that resonate even now are the ones who sort of are more authentic than the others. So you have a question of, so what is an authentic Nigerian story, right? That's a big question. Does the story of a Nigerian in the UK become less authentic to Nigeria than the story of a Nigerian in Nigeria? No, it doesn't. Whatever the Nigerian experience is, to the extent that you're authentic to that so that you you do not do a telling of because if you go to the UK the Nigerian community is a very specific kind of community so the the the, the British slash Nigerian community has its thing and it, have, it has its vibe that's that in itself is an extension of 
a Nigerian community, but sometimes very different from the Nigerian community that is in Nigeria. Now, when you understand those sensibilities and those differences, they're very nuanced. But if you get it, your portrayal of it is going to be very different from someone who just stars the cultures with a brush, the same brush, and hoping to get different results. That's where authenticity flows through, and that's what you look for. Interesting that you dive into that because I was going to, one of the things I think about when I see some of the more recent movies that show up on the streamers is the extent to which the the technique, and I'm not talking the story now, just the technique of telling that story, uh, principal photography, everything that goes into it, it seems American, right? And we know what American movies are like. There's a specific uh, image, there's a specific sound, there's a way the story transits. It's very different from European movies. And this is, of course, e even when you start to mark it down to which European country. It's different from uh, Korean movies. We've started to see a lot of K-pop, right, which Nigerians are really consuming in, in the to, numbers, yep. mm -hmm. massive numbers. Um, same thing around anime, for instance. So uh, I'm curious about that in that sense, that technique sense, whether we have, are you concerned that the Nigerian flavor, the Nigerian element is sort of being whittled down? So I'd say this. There are things that are universal to cinema, right? And that is the look and feel of a film. You, you, you treat sound a certain way. You treat pictures a certain way. You finish them to look a certain way. Um, there are different combination of shots that you can take and that would tell that universally our audiences have been schooled to interpret in a certain way. Those are commonalities of cinema that you know runs across anywhere cinema is made. Now, it, the difference becomes in in tempo, in 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 um, progression, in structuring, right? That becomes unique to a different people in a different way. So it is it is actually in the telling. So European cinema would linger a bit more on shots, allow characters to take their time. Nollywood films I and mean, Hollywood films are very choppy the, 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 the pacing is quite frenetic most of the time they hardly linger that way um, except when they're very deliberately trying to be European in, 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 in the finishing of that particular telling of that story so the difference where you get your identity is in the telling um, Bollywood for example uh, in the telling of their stories would in the middle of something break into a dance it's become an accepted form of cinema that is unique to Bollywood um, K-pop is more frenetic than even American films, right? Um, 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 and, and you find that happening. Um, and, and that's their identity. Ours, um, I think in the, in the earlier genres of Nollywood, I think ours was in the, in the, in the acting style and in the, in the, in the progression of the stories. Um, we would we would have, you know, shots that would follow action, you know, indefinitely, you know, and for whatever reasons that was happening, that was part of it. You have a certain melodramatic feel to acting, right? And even the, the dialogue that is Nigerian films. And that was what it was in the earlier. Um, so now you have... A, a newer range of filmmakers who have gone to film school come back. Remember that the other people were people who were coming from theatre, people who were mostly really from theatre, who went into TV and then came into making films. Now you have a combination of those. We have an influx of people who have gone to film schools, mostly in the West. They've learned all of the techniques, but have not imbued and found their voice in the realm of storytelling so in the telling of the story they're trying to express the craft that they have learned and in that sometimes you lose your voice and you lose what makes you authentic in the telling of the story 
I am curious about finding that authenticity. And I mean, you yourself have some experience mm-hmm. outside the country in terms of going to learn your craft, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and for young filmmakers who are up and coming, many of them, at least the names that are dominant, if you like, in the industry, these are people who have also gone out and they're back home and they're doing what they're doing. Mm-hmm. So in a case like that, our generation, we grew up, it was Hollywood on TV. Mm-hmm. Uh, how do you find that authenticity considering this So I, I'll, I'll say this to you. We let's not, let's not make it sound as if no one is telling authentic Nollywood stories presently. Mm. Right? It's just that the predominance is what we're referring to. Yes. Right? Um, so there are filmmakers that are doing that level of authentic, you know, you know storytelling that's Nigerian, Nollywood, African, whatever it is. Uh, that's happening. I think that what would happen is that there are different categories or different camps of filmmakers. There are people who make who make films to panda to the West, and so they're making those films to travel all the festivals to do whatever it is that they do in the West. And there are people who are telling stories just to entertain, and and so you have the sleuth of. Um, comedy films uh, um, where you have an ensemble of everybody that can make anybody laugh in one piece and every, that's going. And then you have people who are dealing with subjects and, and, and picking issues to address. Uh, people fall into different categories. I think that the people who are dealing with issues, right, are more in the group that's, that's found their voice and have something that they want to say. And I think that in the realm of the entertainment people as well, you know, it's it's sometimes slapstick comedy, sometimes, you know, uh, whatever you want to call it, but you can't take away the Nigerianness of that as well. So that's going on. Uh, in the in the pandering to the West's crowd, there's that going as well. And I think that as you if you look at that as a spectrum, right? on a scale of one to 10, each of them is as authentic as they can be, uh, but more on one side than on the other, if you catch my drift. <laughs> I do, I do, I do. Um, at this point, I want to bring Cannywood into the conversation. Mm. So for many people for whom Nollywood is the first, right? Cannywood has been growing sort of adjacent. Uh, but of course, if you go up north, there's many people for whom it's Nollywood that's the adjacent. Um, and in many ways, the growth has been, I wouldn't call it commensurate, but they have both been growing. And here we are in this one moment. We're sharing the same time and space, but it seems like they're in two different places. And I wonder how you think these two moments for Cannywood and Nollywood, how they sort of combine the impact they would share and just the possibility that maybe, maybe... There's a convergence. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so I'll say this. The the subject of adjacency, who is adjacent to who, uh, depends on how you look at it. I'll say this. I think that Cannywood is perhaps the only industry left that has true superstars. You know, in the sense of how o- old Nollywood had superstars. Uh, you take some stars from old Nollywood and you go to a labor market, they will shut it down. Because just everybody comes to a standstill, right? You don't have that kind of following with the newer stars. But you go to Kanyewood and um, take um, Ali, what's his name now? Ali Nuhu. Take Ali Nuhu down the street, take Sani Danja down in the street, and you would cause commotion, right? So, I think that what people do not realize is just the population of the audience of Kanyewood and the hold that Kanyewood has on that audience. Now, you have, you have the, the entire belt that starts from Nigeria through Ghana up, you know, to Mali and the rest of them, where you have Hausa-speaking population. I don't even think the streamers realized it up until about this year. Because the number of commissions of Hausa content that the streamers are now, you know, commissioning, says they've woken up to that reality. And so the convergence is already happening where you have um, um, Rahama 
Miriam Booth, of course, um, Ali Nuhu, Sani Danja, um, Mohammed, um, have all already been acting mm. in in Nollywood films and more of them would follow because as Nollywood realizes the power of that audience, pulling their stars into would become just a natural progression just in the way that it has happened with the Yoruba um, um, and films and for a long time has been happening with the Igbo films as well. So this will, uh, I'm, I'm doing a behind the scenes, this is my final question because I know I've exceeded my 10 minutes, but it's just a fraction of time in eternity. Um, I want to take you back to the conversation around the streamers, right? Uh, definitely, we've seen them pouring a lot of money into the industry, into Nigeria, and by extension, other African countries are also beneficiaries of this movement that's begun. And, and I say this with all... I don't know if the word is humility. I know that I've moved... I remember in Kenya, people were talking about what Nollywood movies were like, and they'd see a Nigerian and know you're a Nigerian, and they're asking you for bitter cola, right? Whether you, you're Igbo or not. Um, so it's in the context of that I'm talking about Nigeria sort of leading us, the continent, in this way. Um, I, I wonder if there is in any way some sort of concern around the fact that this funding is coming from the outside. You've had to fund a number of your projects out of pocket mm -hmm. um, from the beginning, and I'm sure even up till now, that's something that's still going on. Mm -hmm. And it takes us back to the economy, general, you know, overall economy for the country, but then as entertainment goes and as movies go. So is this a source of concern? Do you think we need to raise funders from home more than what we already have? So, they usually would say, as entertainment goes, so everything else follows. And I think that the managers of our culture, the managers of our businesses, have not woken up to the power of the doors that films open. Product placement and branding are ways in which films can travel further. So products that are entirely Nigerian can become known across the continent, right? And if you create that awareness, the products themselves can follow, right? Now, we did not take advantage of that. But if we did, what that would mean is that there's a whole revenue strand that can feed the film industry that has not happened because businesses have not woken up to that reality. But government in itself has also woken up to that reality because that's part of cultural um, dominance, how you send your things across, you know, the, the Chinese, the French, the American, the British, all have funds that take care of that. But there's no return expected on those investments other than just cultural dominance, right? Mm. We don't have that. So that's a tranche of revenue as well. That's been lost. So you've been left with just bringing money out of your pocket. And up until now, you cannot give a strong business case for an investor to put money in your film. Because just the balance sheet will just not balance. Right? Now, we're getting to a point where um, very easily people are raising $1 million, $2 million, $3 million, right? From indigenous investors because you now have more outlets through which your money can come back. If it's a business, you find the money to do it. Now, there's nothing wrong with the money from the streamers coming in. It is needed money, and you're putting out content, right? To the extent that however you want to defend the voice that you have is the extent to which you will engage with the streamers. And having that presence of mind to know what it is that you are doing and what it is that you want to say uh, becomes how you engage with the streamer. So if you engage with a streamer on the basis of an original, the streamer has editorial control 100%, right? And how that happens. And they own that IP when you're done. Now, if you do not want that level of um, pock nosing into, <laughs> into, into your into your thing, then you do it as fund it yourself and you finish and then they can license it. Mm -hmm. 
you have full editorial control where that's concerned. You have um, the IP remains your property, right? So again, how do you want to engage? If you're just looking to just get the money, then, you know, and you're unable to defend what you really want to say. So it's it's a fine line. But I think also even with the streamers, it comes with your statue as well. Where are you at in your journey as, 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 as a producer, as a director? What are you looking to achieve? Mm. You know, the culture conversation is very fascinating because I, I know that 15 years ago, I don't know how many people would have definitively said that there's a strong number of Nigerians who follow, for instance, Japanese content. There you go. We are saying things like arigato. We're saying things that are words we picked up from anime cartoons because mm -hmm. nobody wants to call it. An uh, and by the way, I say this knowing full well that people who love anime will come for you. you. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Not but me. I didn't say it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I grew up watching anime with mm -hmm. my brothers. They co-opted me. My but, sons, you know, my sons are all into it. And they're in I, the right place. I would thread carefully what I say. You should. You, you <laughs> certainly should. But, you know, I, I'm fascinated seeing merchandise that is from popular anime being sold in Nigeria. Absolutely. We're organizing Comic Cons based on Japanese anime. We know? have a we have a film in which um it's it's um it's young love and the two lovers bond over their arguments about anime characters. You're exposing to people that I'm probably one of the characters in this film that you're, you're, you're talking about now. But just finally, uh, final thoughts, right? I know you said future of Nollywood, you know, may as well be up in the air. Nobody really knows. But from your perspective, Steve Gukas, you've been in the business decades now. What are you saying? I'll say this. I have, I have strong, strong faith in the future of Nollywood. Because uh, I'm, I'm also contributing to it. Um, I'm not about to. I'm not about to. I'm very, very far from the thought of even stopping. Um, so I know that we have, we have books that we have optioned the rights to that we're going to make into films. We have limited series. We have you know, feature films that are all in development. So from that perspective, to just lead by example, that's going to continue happening. Um, our initiative first features. Uh, which currently is working with 12 first-time filmmakers. Um, we are looking to change um, just the understanding of who a director is and what the director brings to the table with those 12 young directors who are doing... One of them is what we're here for, right? Um, and basically walking them through what is the ideal step in a way that even a film school doesn't do with you, right, is what we're doing where we take you from ideation, the story, you, how you work with a writer through development, right? And then take you through a boot camp, how you make the film and how you interact with different professionals that you're going to have to deal with. What's your conversation with the editor like? What's your conversation with the composer like? What's your conversation with the art director, the production designer, the wardrobe people? What, what are the different things that you have to play with in your mind as you pre-visualize your movie? And then what's the process of actually filming and then we'll take you all through you know the post-production process processes all in the ideal not in the skimp mm. right so that by the time you're done you've been through the entire process exactly the way a hollywood film would be made so now you can say you're a director anywhere because when you say i am the director you're bringing something to the table you know what the director is bringing to the table a lot of directing in nigeria is coverage and if you're a director on a set doing coverage you're not needed there the DP can do the coverage right so if we put in 12 fresh visionaries into the industry that's contribution and if we do that two three four five times over exponentially you can imagine what is happening right but we're not the only ones doing it a lot of other people are seeing the reality of that, are doing it at different scale, at different levels, but it's happening. Change is on the way. I like that. I, I, I like that. This is certainly the end for this conversation anyway. 
um, and we're holding you to it. We're looking forward to seeing the content that you've got in the pipelines, different points. So, you know, I'll prepare my wallet. If it means, you know, the streamer, I will make sure my subscription is up to date and I'm coming that, to the cinema if that's the case. That's the only appeal we can make. Support local and we would become global. Mr. Kukas, thank you so much for your time it's and been, for indulging me. It's been a delight. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Bye. And that's entertainment now on Radio Now 95.3 FM, Lagos. Thanks for watching.